What's up guys? So yesterday, kind of unexpectedly, I happened to pull Gandalfon. Now I was obviously really hoping to get Harima instead of him, but Gandalfon is not that bad and only thing I would say that I wish I got him like two or three years ago and not now because he literally used to be the best champion in defense or best nuker in classic arena defense for a good like two or three years I wish I had him during that time like you know before um, before Taras maybe even like before Cupidos he used to be the best nuker for a few years and um, he used to pair really well with Duchess and Necret and I happen to have both of them and I also would have had insane gear for him years ago so it kind of feels bittersweet getting him now because now he's not you know popular you, you probably don't really meet Candrophon very often I mean you're never gonna meet him in classic arena you might sometimes meet him in live arena on people that don't have the new top champions but he is actually pretty strong especially in the old standards he was super strong and something that people might not remember is that um, Gandalfon is one of those champions that got a massive rework he used to be absolutely trash and then they reworked him and he became meta and I wish Plarium would do the same thing for many other champions but yeah I don't actually ha have him in um, full masteries yet <laughs> we're still missing like two ones I would definitely go with Cycle of Revenge and Retribution. You could even uh, not go with Delay of Death and go with whatever this is called. Halve Harvest Despair, even though it doesn't do anything, just to get Deterrence and Cycle of Revenge. Candrophon is, of course, you know, well known that he has a very strong A1. That is one of the hardest A1s in the game. Now, these days, you know, George, it hits way harder with A1. But still, it's one of the hardest hitting A1s in the game and you definitely want to go with one of the masteries that add A1 procs but I think generally deterrence is actually kind of you know almost preferable because people expect you to have retribution or possibly revenge accessories and sometimes they might avoid hitting your candlephone with support so you could go with either one of those I'm, I might actually change my mind later and go with deterrence especially since at least right now we have two revenge accessories on him o outside of that this is the build I wouldn't really change anything only thing is that that is debatable maybe is that you could go with you know shield breaker instead of double like uh, double masteries on the defense tree that, that's totally fine I think I'm gonna change the build anyway when I got get it full and you could go with ruthless ambush instead of burden of death that's kind of you know depends on your preferences and so on but probably most people would go with shield breaker and root the sambus or at least one of them outside of that don't even consider switching everything but obviously if you go for um if you go for ruthless ambush then you kind of you need to skip a couple of the good defense tree masteries here but it's not that big deal, Th then you're just gonna skip them, so I do like the resurgent though, that you might get rid of stuns and other things, so that's situational and preference. As far as the build that we have, I would go with 4p stone skin or full reaction if I could, but weirdly enough I didn't really... I only had one piece of reaction for him, he doesn't even have attack subset on it. I was actually looking that I would have a merciless amulet and I could get like 200 more attack which kind of sounds like a huge deal but uh, because it gives you 10% for the one piece set bonus and it also does have the substat but I think we're gonna keep with with the uh, reaction amulet because that's the only defensive utility that we have of course he has his passive but it's not enough in the current meta. I would build him in 4p stone skin like I would do basically every nuker in the game. But we don't have that for him, though we're like one piece off, so 
if we just get one one drink next week it might be it might be in four piece stone skin in a couple days outside of that though we you know we have very good gear on him obviously since he has very strong a1 Revenge accessories are very good and they were meta before stone skin but we're not um i would rather have stone skin than these than these accessories these days but as you can see we have like triples on the banner and ring so it's not like they are terrible but i would rather go with the proper set as far as the rest of the gear as you can see it's fully you know fully pimped out everything is what it's supposed to be we're running speed boots though not not attack boots so if you had really good gear attack boots would generally give you a little bit more stats if you had like you know speed draws on everything and you were also running attack boots that would be preferable but we're we're running with this and he's kind of fast but not you know 250 speed so people are running faster nukers than this but it's kind of fast he also does get turn meter from his passive so there is that also i think um let me double check i don't think i actually checked did we get yeah we didn't get so I got him and whatever is the name of the other one. I can't even remember her name. She actually kind of used to be popular in cl classic arena defense for a bit. Yeah, I got boot here. That's a new one, not the dupe. But I would be like one demon spawn dupe away from getting extra 10 speed on candy. Okay, so let's get into the battles and see how well we do. I also do got the one star blessing on mode now, so I have made some small um, progression. So I, I still need to, you know, ask and her gear and it's not quite finished. I got quite many new things recently, so everything is not fully worked out on the gear department. And I guess, you know, we got the event dungeon and everything, so it, it kind of complicates things. I can't really farm Sand Devil and Phantom Shogun 24-7. Oh, come on. Nobody's queuing it in the morning or what? This is my morning coffee hat. As you know, good old Mega Force, the, the cheapest energy drink brand that you can get in Finland at least. Why, why pay for Red Bull or any other ones when they all taste just as bad? <laughs> That's my feeling about it. You know, so sometimes I, I like order order things from like you know AliExpress or something like that, and I always gawk at the prices that you know you can often get the same thing or literally much better quality for like a fraction of the cost, and really the only thing that um, that is like increase or the the thing that is increasing the price of products that we get is not really the quality but it's the branding and you can literally you know get some knockoff band that can sometimes or oftentimes even be better and it's like many 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 times cheaper it's kind of shocking if you think about it at, at least for me maybe i maybe maybe everybody knows about it and it's not that shocking but for me it's shocking every time i don't know if i want the early big rotos but i guess we'll do it So probably with candy, we're often gonna pick Necrat and Candy. They are a good combination. But against this team, unless we're gonna ban Narsis, we're not gonna pick Necrat. Uh, okay, he has one pick left. I mean, it can be a lockout, but I guess we could we could go for Necrat, actually. Should I do it? Th 
the envy bull is gonna be annoying. Uh, yeah, probably I shouldn't. I think I should just let's just go with Mord. More than Wu. Uh, I don't know if Candy can really survive without any protection. I guess he has one piece of revenge. It, it might have a reaction. It might almost be better than on Galleus because Galleus is probably gonna get busted by Marius. And he has guns. Let's let's keep Candy a go in the first battle. I wasn't really planning to use him in this battle, but let's let's give it a go. I'm not gonna force Candy into every single battle today, but let's try it in the first one just to get some impression. This is literally the first battle that I'm trying with him with the Helm Smasher mastery. <laughs> I did some fights before that just to just to test him out, but now we actually have masteries. Okay. Let's see who's lockout is faster, but I'm assuming that he probably has faster Yumeko than, than my Armands, but maybe not. Mm, yeah. I mean my Armands is in stone skin, so. It's generally not faster than lockouts. Oh, we survived the ally attack, but we're still gonna die before he gets it. Wait, no, can, we can reduce the turn meter. Even if we don't get to use the abilities. Oh no, <laughs> he got the counter attack. I guess he had revenge accessories. Yeah. Okay. So Luker is dead before he even got the turn. This happens to me like, you know, in most battles. Like, li literally like way more than 50% battle, my Lukers are de dead before they even get the turn, so... Okay, one more turn and we could we could get the revive. Can we do it? Nah, no. Armand is gonna lose the turn now because of the stun, but Maud is still gonna remove the stun from herself though. Wait, what? I thought it was one turn away. I guess it wasn't. Okay, I got. I guess we're not gonna get a turn on her. <laughs> did, what? Did, did I guess I miss? I probably saw it wrong. It's not like he somehow increased the lockout by one more turn. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's no way we can we can survive another nuke. Yeah. People complain about polymorph and stone skin, but we <laughs> we need more stuff now that. You know, those are both getting ignored. It's not easy being <laughs> going second in every battle. The, the Marius boss trip, you know, goes three times and all of them have 50% chance to remove stone skin. So more often than not, that no, he's also going to remove the stone skin. And he's void, so there isn't even like a specific faction that you can use to feast for weak hits and maybe keep the stone skin. Hmm. Should I go with Necrot? I mean, if I pick Necrot now, uh, he, if, he, uh, if he has like Lazarus or something, he's totally going to pick them, but let's go with that. He's probably going to ban my Reviver in this battle, but that's fine. Let's see what happens. At least we're going to have Bolster. Okay. 
Okay. UDK, they actually changed how the UDK bus works, I think, years ago. I think it, it used to be way worse against Candy, and then they made it only take one hit of the two Candy hits, but I think we want to be big gallows in this battle and not not candy. I think he, yeah, I think he's gonna ban the Ankara, surely. Right? He is really thinking about it. Maybe he's gonna ban Wukong or something else. Usually people will just instant ban the Ankara. Okay, we, yeah, we can't um, polymorph the Harima, of course, because of Necret, but he also got the protection on, like, defense buff and everything, so we can't even um, buff strip him with Wukong, so that went kind of bad. Mod would be good right about now. We, we do have triple polymorph though, so he could totally eat that. Ah, oh, come on. I think we're gonna... <laughs> Are we gonna lose the first two battles in row? Fuck. We're almost about to get turned, but then we're gonna get another CC on us, so... I don't think we're even gonna get, get a turn again. We, we got super unlucky, you know? Even though he has the protected immunity, so... We can't... We, we can't dip off him. That sucks. He, he protected like everything on CV. And again, again, okay. Okay, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we can't do anything and Rooster is locked out like again before, before he, before the stun ended, before he got another turn. Well, that's why I was hyped about the mod, but I didn't pick her in this battle against God here, so I guess that's my bad. I wish we could, like, you know, if he just removed one of the CCs with, like, um, with the Masteries, and we could just get one turn on Rooster, we could definitely kill some people. Well, chances are I get one turn and he gets polymorphed and we're debuffed for like three minutes and draw and nobody's getting polymorphed, so... Okay, we, we lost. Yeah. Dude, dude Shiro, not, not, not the best start for today, but we move on. I really hope that I get like one stone skin accessory on my mode next week because right now 
she is in like five star amulet. I mean, she's in attack amulet and five star ring. And I think the five star ring, you know, I think it misses like HP or defense. I I forgot which one, but it's not even a usable five star ring. And we are just no no, it's a defense ring without percent its HP. I think, but <laughs> we're scraping like the bottom of barrel just to get the stone skin on her. And we do want her to be a little bit tanky too, so it's not ideal. And she's also in two piece perception. I kind of want to change her to two piece immortal down the line, but we need to make a her a little bit faster before we can we can do it. Right now her speed is okay, but I can't have her slower than any of my nukers. Okay, so every team that we battled so far was like faster than us with, you know, multiple lockouts and so on. But this is a full on squeezy speed team. Okay, he, he, he's so gonna ban the UDK, he has both Wukong and Siegfried on the team. Uh, what do we want to do? Thing is that this guy doesn't really have like immunity or anything like that. We probably should go with Mikake in, in this battle. But I, I feel like, no, let's, let's go with mode. Ah, oh, fuck, I was too slow. <laughs> God damn it. I was gonna say that I'm sure he's faster with both Arbiter and Armands. I'm sure my my Mikage is in protection and not stone skin anymore. She is in my fastest build, but I'm sure he would go before my Mikage. But okay, now we now we screwed it up. We don't even have mod or neither Mikage or mod. Rooster can be okay here if he gets a turn though. He's in stone skin and he could one shot his team, I'm sure. Maybe it's even better than Mord, actually. Anybody will get one shot by the Wukong and Siegfried, so it doesn't really matter how tanky you are. You are. Only thing that can save you is the stone skin. Also, he has like <laughs> triple reviver. Th that's that's where things are at. Uh, let's do the A two. Uh... Oh yeah, we have this form. <laughs> yeah, let's do let's do the A two on this form. <laughs> let's put provoke on his secret. Okay, that works out. Yeah, like I, I don't normally use this form at all, and I instantly go to the other form. But we could nuke them anyway because of the Siegfried passive and Wukong passive. We need to get rid of the Siegfried one first and then we can do something, but now, now we can do it, I guess. I think we're good. Even with the Wukong stone skin, we, we have two champions, he used his abilities, so I I think we're good. Wait, we, we could even turtle like this and put defense buff and revive on death to buy some time. Okay, nice. Okay. <laughs> Actually the m me speaking Garleos was kind of kind of useful here. I don't know if we could have won it regardless, but I think maybe not actually. Maybe not. But looks like we have to use more a lot today because we're just pacing those Galatiers and other speed teams every battle and I was kind of planning to use Necret a lot to pair it with Dandy but I don't think we really often have room to pick Necret because we want to get more in most fights I think okay against a cluster mate I can't recall ever fighting this guy 
before. Maybe I have, you know, I have a lot of battles, but can't remember this one specifically. But I, I want to get like one battle at least where it's a good matchup for Candy, where we can go with Necrot and Candy. That kind of hasn't happened so far. And in the battle where we got Candy, we didn't even get a single turn, so... Yeah, we, we have to go with mod almost every battle. We we can't go with something else. We really need the mod here. Almost could go with either Candy or Galileo Stall because they are kind of good affinities against the Lazarus, but we have the Galileos in stone skin. I'm kind of leaning that we should pick him because of that, because he's gonna go with over with the Mikage ally attack and he could instantly kill the candy. Like I don't think our one one reaction piece is gonna save us from ally attack, so Pro probably now he's gonna open with the buff strip actually to try to get rid of the stone skin though. I kind of hope to get like, hmm, interesting. Uh, what do we even ban here? I feel like we're gonna go actually for her. Lazarus ban. Yeah, let's do that. I need like one one stone skin piece on like every champion that I have. On Galleos too, as you might know, we're running attack ring. <laughs> Which is very, like, you know, not ideal, but it's better than running defense ring that it, without 4 piece stone skin. <laughs> so we're literally doing that, but we're actually losing kind of good amount of damage, so I, I hope we can get that. Or, you know, any kind of banner that would be half decent, of course. But we need one piece on him, one piece on Candy, and one piece on Maud, or... We could use multiple pieces on mod, and like half of my half of my roster needs like one stone skin piece. Okay, we kind of got unlucky here. He removed the stone skin from Galleos, rather and and Rotos, rather he removed it from mod, but he happened to remove it from both of the nukers, which is you know unlucky. But looks like we might get a turn here before. No, no. I don't think so. No, I think his Narhus is actually kind of slow, so we might get a turn here. I think my... Uh, no, fuck. Mika Gebassu. My Nukers are clearly a lot faster than his, but we're getting lots of turn meter manipulation, so he still went first. Come on, just let me have one turn. No, I think he's gonna go first again. This is what I mean, like, almost in no battle we we get a single turn on the Nukers. We we got, you know, if just one one of the Nukers didn't get buff strip from the stone skin, we would have been good though. Okay. Eat frostbite. Yeah, no, now now we're good. He doesn't have Harima passive, so. We're killing people on every Roto Snook. Th that was looking kind of bad, but I think we're good at this point. Yeah, if we, if, if we can just like, you know, get tens, we're, we're usually good. What's the score now?
Two two, okay. Almost even, but I'm kind of feeling bad about today's session. It feels like we're we're getting owned every battle and we're not even getting turns. Okay, Harryu man, Lazarus, this guy knows how to treat me. Nice. Probably, I think we will go a lot with double reviver today with more than Angkor. It kind of seems like that's the road that I usually have to take, and I can't really go with um with like Necret or Wukong or Mikage. Yeah, I feel like probably between Galleos and Candy, I'm probably usually gonna prefer him for multiple reasons, but if not anything else because of the <laughs> polymorph that we have on Galleos that we desperately need, so... That could be a Nook Wukong too, that necessarily isn't a support Wukong, but it is in Polymorph, so maybe it is. I don't know if I should should have banned it instead of Yumeko, but let's see how this goes. But it's always, you know, like uphill battle that we're waiting for the CCs to end when the enemy goes first and CC is us nine different ways. Okay, he did remove the stone skin from Gallows, but can we go before Harima? Maybe we can. Okay. We couldn't and Harima still has defense buff, even though he's gonna lose it. But I think we can take one nuke with that shield and strengthen. Yeah. Though I guess we lost some damage there because she stole defense. But surely we have. Okay, we didn't get. <laughs> didn't get any people. Surely we can kill the nukers now, I think. Maybe, maybe not, but I feel, I feel like surely we're gonna kill them. Oh. But we didn't get the defense buff on Harima for some reason. And, uh, okay, it's some kind of hybrid Wukong, uh, I guess. With that revive, though, I mean, are we not good here? Feels kind of ways to use both of the revives, but we should use them. But I think I think it's it. I think we already won. Nars has got the turn and now we're on the offensive and he's on the defensive. It, it's you know, it's this cycle that you go first, you kill or seize the enemy nukers, and then even if they get revived, they're gonna die before they get a turn. And that's always what happens to me, but we were able to reverse it here. Okay, nice. Now we're winning, so...
I'm looking at Reddit, but doesn't seem like there's anything super interesting there today. Okay, actually, <laughs> scratch that. This sounds funny. Okay, I didn't read it yet, but this sounds funny. Help! Wife addicted. <laughs> what is this Reddit post? He already picked three supports, so we don't necessarily need to go with UDK here. But we might decide that we need it actually in the end. But uh, what what do I pick? Should we go with Wukong actually? Almost Necrot could be interesting here too, but it depends what Nugars here. Let's go with Necrot. Let's go with Necrot. Maybe and then Helicat, you know. Helicat or Wukong as the last one. Help! Wife addicted. My wife is addicted to Raid Shadow Legends. Every second of the day, she has the game on auto battle. Whenever I think we're finally alone, <laughs> together, bam, she pulls it out of her pocket and I see a screen that says victory. I brought it up a few times, but she insists that it's her way of winding down. What should I do? <laughs> I don't know if this is like a joke, but sound, sounds good to me. W what are you complaining there? <laughs> you know, I, I sometimes look at my statistics on YouTube and it's usually around like the 0.9% female, so a little bit less than 1%. Fuck. Let's go with Mika again. We used to have one, one female in my clan. I don't think we have anybody right now unless I forgot somebody in that case. My bad, but I don't think there's even any females in my clan right now, so... But I'm, I'm sure those 0.9% those exist somewhere, so... Actually, I remember when I said something like what's up guys at the start of the video, I got like two comments that, you know, I'm a female, so be more inclusive, so... I don't know if those guys were memeing, but pro probably they were, but yeah. Can we... I feel like we can kill the Ronda with ally attack. Maybe we should open with that instead of the... Boss trip. Yeah, I, I kind of forget that I rarely use attack buff on my Rotos, and he still hits hard, but if he actually gets attack buff and he's not against Harima, you know, my Rotos obviously has some of the best gear in the game and he's gonna hit in insanely hard. Yeah, 281,000 on, on a Sifi. There, there you go. He's just so countered in the meta, but if he's not, obviously he's gonna kick some ass. Okay, that's a potential piece with speed, even though no HP. Everything else is trash. Let's quick, quickly roll that weapon and maybe we get lucky. Oh wait, not, not these, fuck. Wrong ones. Alright, let's quickly sell. Th this is gonna mess up my... My accessories, because I don't want to, you know, <laughs> sell them right there, but we, we have to do that. Okay, let's see a triple. I guess I should roll... Okay, fuck me. I guess I should roll everything to double, just in case I want to chaos or something, but I think everything else here is... 
Alcatraz. Okay, let's roll that to triple. Oh, wait. Oh, ah. we, fuck, we, we have to roll that all the way to the end. Okay. Triple attack? No, okay. I mean, not attack, accuracy. Obviously, you know, Chaos Aura is a thing, and Impulse Set is very good one, and very rare, so you kind of want to go to extremes on, on this set. Okay, of course. Get screwed. The last piece, the, the seal one, I, I don't care about that. That one, like, we're obviously, you know, fishing for triple or guard speed rolls on the impulse set, but as far as re-rolling the teal set where we wouldn't do it, so... But okay, let's get like a candy battle. I wanted to show it on video and I kind of wanted to get some battles for me me too because now I have him and I want to see him in practice but I don't want to lose battles on purpose just to not even pick the best team that I can when it's already already hard enough so if there's like a battle where we we're not, you know, I often already pick like UDK or Ankara and I need mod, so I'm kind of, you know, locking in all of the supports, but if we can fit in, oh, <laughs> if we can fit in Necret with Zipik now, and we don't need like three of those things, then I will use him when it's possible. I mean, we could use him without Necret too, but he kind of wants to have Necret. He's good with both the ally attack and he needs some defensive utility. Maybe I should have just picked Narcissus and UDK here and not Angora yet. Yeah. I don't know if that's a feel like it's not, but maybe that's a support Wukong since um, it would be kind of weird that he picked Necra to protect Wukong, but maybe he did actually do it. Should we just go with Rodos and UDK? That kind of makes sense here. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do it. Never mind if it's a new Wukong, but Rodos is going to be great against both Sifi and Taras, so we'll have to do it. Okay, it's a new Wukong, and also I guess the Taras is going to hit pretty hard with all of those buffs. Now I'm kind of thinking, should I actually go for Taras ban? Maybe, okay, let's go for a Sifi ban. He's gonna have a lot of less buffs with Sifi. He's still getting a lot of them, of course, but way less with Sifi. And maybe he's. Maybe the Crixia is not insanely fast, and it's relying on the Sifi boost to go first. Maybe my Armans could be slightly faster than it. Okay, no. Oh, he weak it though, he weak it. Well, that, that's game over, I mean... We got a turn on Armand, so we can't lose at this point. Yeah. that That's Rodos for you, I... I hate him, but I love him. He's, you know, so so bad against Harima and UDK, but 
When he's not against them, he's so good. But I think because of that, you know, me just getting more nukers is indirectly buffing my Rotos because people are not always picking a team just to counter Rotos against me anymore. And if that doesn't happen, then my, my Rotos is OP. And I still don't have Marius, which I'm gonna get soon, so there's even one more. I feel like I got so many new champions this year, way more than in the last one. I feel like I got pretty much no, no new champions for PvP at all in the last year. I think Wukong and that's it, but this year it's like so many. Angora, Narses, Armands, Maud, Candy, who am I forgetting? Gallows. Yeah, so many. Okay, Mika get UDK. We know that he's gonna pick Wukong, guaranteed. And Wukong can weak it against. Ankara too, so we should definitely go with that. Often affinities are kind of... Um, can actually be kind of relevant in live arena. Especially... yeah, especially when we talk about mythic champions. Oh, okay, he didn't go with Wukong, which is kind of surprising, but... Maybe he changed his plan. But that's the biggest weakness on mythicals, so... That, that's the one way you can ch sometimes kind of try to um, cheese against them. Now we could technically go here with Necret and Candy, but do I really want to do that against Taras? He has UDK too. I feel like I want to do it for the video, but I should just go with Gallows. He's gonna be strong affinity against Nice too. And do we even want to go with Necrot? Should I go with like... Fuck. Wukong. Let's go with Wukong. If he doesn't pick it, then we're gonna pick it. We'll get rid of all of the boss so that the Taras can hit hard. Okay, he's not going with any Reviver, that's weird. In that case, we're gonna go for the UDK ban and... We can polymorph wherever we want, but he's running triple nuker. I mean, I guess nice is a reviver, like pretty much all of the mythic nukers at this point. That, that's some kind of, you know, theme that they have going on with the mythic nukers, that every nuker is also a reviver, but I guess nice is one of those. Would do we even want to? Um, I guess we'll go with Taras, but I feel like maybe I, maybe I should have gambled to try to polymorph. Nice, but nah, let's let's do this. I want want to open with the shield, but we probably do want to save it for our possible stun from Mikage. Okay, he's saving it. Okay, come on. No polymorph. I think we can kill the Mika, okay? Maybe. Ah, close, close. Not quite. In oh, okay, never mind. It's <laughs> that that's certainly enough to kill it. Okay, okay. We're, we're good. Surely surely nice is not going to sweep us here. I mean, he can block revive. He can Revive his teammates, so he's gonna do something. I think 
he's gonna kill like Galleos or something like that, but surely that's not good enough to win. I mean, he can revive multiple champions, by the way. If he gets multiple kills, like Wukong and Galleos, yeah, he can revive multiple champions. There is that, yeah. Oh, and now we're gonna get stunned on... No, okay, no, we're, we're good. d like. No, I think we lost it, honestly. I think we lost this battle, fuck. I think we lost. Damn. And people kept telling me on the last video, that, or on the last stream, that Nice isn't good at all, and he's like... <laughs> Mediocre mythic champion when I was saying that Nice is my most wanted wanted mythic champion. Ah, we didn't get the block damage. But I, I think we're gonna Fatalis is just gonna sweep us. Yeah, it's done, it's done. We didn't get rid of the block damage, so I don't think we can take it from here. She still has the stun? No? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely nice isn't isn't OP. Sure. Okay. I thought we had it, but fuck. And he's HP scaling Nuker, so he's kind of tanky too. And he didn't even use the first form and I like the first form a lot too, especially the block revive skill, but he didn't even use it. W which made sense in that battle, because he was going for the revives. Barium should like triple the rate of mythic champions so that everybody can actually get them and join in on the fun. Let's just go with more than Narsus and later we'll decide if we want to get the Angora. Tormin? What? You never see anybody using Tormin anymore. Ankara could be good here, actually. Yeah, let's just go with Rotos and Ankara. Both of them can be weak hit by the Phrixia. We're probably gonna ban what whatever he picks as the last one. I'm kind of feeling that way. If not, okay, yeah. If not, I probably would have gone for Mario's ban, but I was kind of expecting this. But yeah, Tormin against Mord, it's not like we can't lose, but it's kind of a weird choice. Pretty sure we already had more before he went with the Tormin. I guess it's gonna add more debuffs on us and we can only remove one of them, so... If we get both Freeze and Enfeeble, we're still screwed. Ah, 
No. And we froze the Ankara with the A1 from Mord. Wait, that's, that doesn't even matter at all, yeah. That's just fine. Actually, that's kind of good that, you know, she doesn't happen to have Polymorph, but that could actually just be good for us if we had it. Oh, ah. Uh, Narada is gonna die before he gets it then. See if he OP. I don't know if we can... <laughs> if we can survive again long enough to actually get a turn on anybody, yeah. Sucks to suck. Stone skin wasn't enough to save us there. Rod Rodos died instantly through the stone skin, so... N now I need to get both uh, both Harima and Mo um, Marius so that my enemies can't pick them against me. <laughs> now it's not just Harima, but we're gonna get Marius very soon, so it's gonna be better. I guess it's kind of, you know, Sifi is so dude that everybody is picking Sifi all, almost in every single battle and they're gonna go first because of that and it's gonna go, it's gonna be good with Marius and even when I do get Marius I'm probably gonna go second anyway, so... Okay, what about this time? We'll go with Gallows again and we hope that we get weak hits and not not remove the stone skin this time. Should I go with more just for the boss trip? No, let's just go with the UDK. We had like the same matchup the last time. We we have to ban the Kinishaktas. No other option here. It will be insta insta loss against the Knishak. Let's just do the shield, even though she can bust a bit, but let's let's give it to us for the first first turn that they know maybe we can survive because of it. I hope we can kill the Wukong though, but we can weak it here. Okay, we did. Uh, I don't know if I should do A2 or not, but let's just use it. Damn. 
Okay, I, I need to game over again. Fuck. No? Okay, wait, wait. Can we make a comeback? I, I thought it was done. Probably not. Yeah, probably we still can't make a comeback. Maybe? I don't think he can kill Narthus on... Nice now. Can he? he? Maybe he can kill the other two though and get some revives up. Oh, oh he went for that. No, yeah. Can't, can't, can't beat the nice, he's too, too tanky. Fuck. Oh, we had a 4, no, 5 battle win streak, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the best enemy, so now we're getting farmed by nice. I'm getting a little bit distracted here. I'm sniping items from like <laughs> Path of Exile trade store. I'm kind of there. W there was this uh, like jewel that was put up for sale on like I think on Friday or was it Thursday or Friday? Just when I you know left, and I saw that the guy was like offline when I saw it, and he went offline like one hour before I noticed the item. Then I, you know, went away for a weekend and asked somebody else to buy it for me when he comes online. But this guy hasn't been online for five days now when I really wanted to buy this one specific jewel. Battle of Exile is a weird weird game in that sense that like the trading and the market is purely like you just make up the numbers how much is something worth and people just trade them there's no you know fixed numbers for prices and the items are so you know specific it's not like i'm selling this one item like that one item and can have like 200 million different stats and different roles on them and they're very unique so you, you kind of, you know, you, you decide if you want to buy items and people can make up any prices. It's a weird economy. But the amulet that guy was selling, and I think he maybe, maybe quit the server or the season and he might not come back anymore. He's play, selling it for a very good price. That, that's a very good amulet, I'm kind of uh, jewel. I'm kind of surprised nobody bought it for whatever small amount of time he was selling it for. I really hope he comes comes online and I can buy it. Not only is he selling it for like insanely cheap price, but there literally isn't a single like comparable jewel in the mark market and probably won't be. He, he could if he sold it for like ten times the price Somebody might buy it. So, anyway. Yeah, okay, let's do this. Let's go with more than Necret and Let's see what he picks first. Maybe we can get a candy battle finally. Oh, 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 we could totally use candy here. Okay. This is a battle where we where he actually makes sense. I mean, we can still get demolished by the Marius Enfeeble, but we could potentially 
kill the Rotos with, from full health with the A1, which is a nice thing about Candy. So, and we even get the attack buff from Mod. Of course, he can do it himself too. But we're kind of um, this is more or less the more ideal situation to use Candy. Not only do we have Necrot, he's doing the CV boost, so we get the whales and stuff. And we also get the attack buff from Mod, but of course Marius can still buff strip us and we might die or get CC'd before we get a turn. Okay, we, we have everything. Though Rodos is still in the stone skin. I don't think we can kill any of the other ones with our nuke, or can we? Maybe I should just do this. Maybe I should have done the A2 there and not use the buffs, but let's do them. Maybe if Maud can like buff strip the defense buff, maybe we can get a really hard nuke on the next turn. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, okay, the candy is hitting really hard. That, that was one hit of the A2 and we could potentially get a double hit. Okay, surely we're gonna get a kill here now, at least on the Mikage. Boob? Oh, okay, and Sifi almost died too, okay. And the big hitting Noog is the A1, not the, not the A2. Okay, th that was a little bit confusing. <laughs> that confused me for a second, even though I know how it works. So we got extra turn from the kill, but if there's multiple champions that get extra turns at the same time, they take turns, and we got extra turn from killing the Mikage, but Rotos also got extra turn from the passive, and that's why he went first. And let's say that Rotos did A1 there and got extra turn from it, our candy would have still gone before the Rotos. That, that's how it works. And back in the day, <laughs> This doesn't work like this anymore, they nerfed it, but um, when you did Necret... Ah, fuck, he died. When you did... I wish we got the weak hit. When you did Necret ally attack, he could actually... Um, on oh, fuck. Oh my god, we lost it. I don't know if I should have not done the revive because... Marius counter attacks when we decrease the return meter. Maybe I should have not done the revive and done it on mod. That might have... <laughs> that might have been a massive mistake. Anyway, don't matter, but back in the day when you did Necret ally attack, Rotos could al also proc extra turns from it, and there, there was this weird combination that would sometimes break the game. If you had Necret in refresh accessories, which, you know, resets the cooldown of your abilities, and when you do A2, which is the Necret ally attack, that doesn't kill when you don't kill a target, you get extra turn. If you do that and you progress reference accessory, you get an extra turn on Necret and you can do more ally attacks. And that ally attack can also proc extra turn on Rotos. And if you can, if you get lucky, which happened to me many times, you might have like, let's say, five extra turns on Rotos in row, because you might do multiple Necret ally attacks in row and then you also get as many Rotos extra turns as you can or like how many you procced, but they, they nerfed it, so you, you you can proc the extra turn on Rotos A1 from ally attacks anymore. That, that was kind of OP, very nice, but when it happened it was super OP. Anyway, we still, we still lost the battle, so... But if you do, didn't know this weird interaction, then now you know. Okay, <laughs> this looks kind of weak, team, I'm not gonna lie. You know, don't see piety on very often, so I'll take that. But what do we want to pick here? UDK and maybe Kalos or Candy. I could almost even pick Candy here. Should I try Candy? 
let's give it a go. I I think it might be okay. He does have some polymorph, even though it's not six star. And he does have the Glens on Python and kind of on <coughs> kind of on Mika Ketu. <coughs> so we probably <coughs> <coughs> Okay, my voice kind of completely cracked out there, so I'll have to cut that out. <laughs> you you don't want to hear that part, trust me. My my voice was super hoarse. Okay, surely we got this battle. Not only are we gonna go first and bully him with armands, but he also doesn't, you know, we don't have nice or Galatir or anything crazy in, in his team. I could probably just open with the um, boss again on Candy and not even Nook on the first turn. Yeah, let's do that. Well, also, we could get Hexed here, so we can cl cleanse the Hex before he takes the next turn. Okay, I guess Mikage is gonna remove them. What? He went for stun. Why? He, he should have gone for buff strip and not the stun. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part on Haruma passive. We can't crit on him with candy. I totally forgot about that. That kind of sucks, actually. Do we have enough damage to kill the Python? I, I don't even know. Okay. Not even close. I mean, he, he did have strength and a defense buff, but I thought maybe, because, you know, I'm not, I'm not that used to using candy yet. But yeah, not... Not being able to crit on Harima kind of sucks, but I guess I do have Galleos for that, so... And that, that was already kind of my Harima counter, so... I'll, I'll know it the next time. The, this seems like a good matchup to experiment, because he doesn't really have the scariest of the teams. But some other teams would be much worse than this one. Polymorph OP. Okay, that didn't hit that hard, but we didn't have the attack buff or the passive. I probably should have done, done the boss instead of the A1, but I thought maybe it's enough damage to kill it. But yeah, us having both... Uh, first of all, just in no situation you want to let, let the enemy have armaments, unless you have like double lockout and you go first. But um, 
not only do we have that, but he also really can't even do anything with the Mitral Hex because of Ankara. So we're kind of good, but obviously, you know, our damage is not insanely impressive here. <laughs> if we had something like Lazarus, we, we would have ended the battle on the first turn. So. By the way, anyone, since I was talking about Path of Exile, anyone wondering, oh, let me put it here, yeah. Don't, don't want to miss out on the in-game happenings. Yes, my character on this current season in Path of Exile, like I said, I used to play the game a lot back in the day, but last time I played it is like seven years ago. So it's been quite a while. I like the game but I'm more into MMOs than these type of games, but it's a super good game, I totally recommend it if you have time to play a season. And it's good in that way, that sense that you don't have to play 24-7, you can play like one season, like two weeks or a month every, every now and then. It kind of works out and everybody starts from scratch. Wait, what? Hmm. Let's just, yeah, we'll, we'll go with Rodos and Wells. I would pick Mikage here if he didn't pick it. Maybe I, I should go with one Reviver, but I, I don't know if I want to get the Mikage or uh, the Mold or Dotsus. Maybe we should go with Dotsus. I haven't used her a lot today. Anyway, so here's my build, if if anybody wants to see. It's still a work in progress. I'm actually kind of um, working to switch my build a little bit. I switched it a couple of times. I started with Onigoroshi, and then, then I had two-handed sword and sword, and now I'm with glove and shield. But I'm gonna switch to like a more tanky mace blood build in a second. Should we go with Gallows? Let's go with Gallows. Triple Nuker. Mage Blood is like a super expensive belt. It's like a flex item, but it kind of enables stuff that you couldn't do otherwise. It's like ultra endgame flex piece. I almost have enough money to buy one and then I can make like way stronger build than, than this. My, my build is super strong already, but I'm gonna be able to make like insanely good build. In that game, you know, the itemization is kind of similar to Raid and I guess any RPG games in that sense that you have random rolls on items, but it's like a million times more complex than Raid and even like uh, even unique items can have different effects and like substats on them that are random and there's a lot of you know complexity and options to come up with bills in in that game almost too much for most people but i like it the part that i like um puts me off for not playing it all the time is because it's not really an mmo if it was an mmo i would like it way more but i'm a pvp player and Battle of Exile is more like a PvE game. Let's put it that way. But good luck to Sergei. This kind of looks like doable, but I don't even know. We got a turn on Gallows, and that's more than I get in most battles, so... It doesn't look too bad. Ah, we... 
Didn't get kills there though, that's kind of bad. Oh, he's <laughs> he surrendered instantly though. Okay. How much time? Okay, 20 minutes, okay. I'm kind of going back and forth today, not really gaining a lot of points, but it is what it is. You would have gone way worse than it has, to be fair. But yeah, it's not gonna be a grand, grand candy video, like... <laughs> if I put candy in the thumbnail now, I... Like happened with the Loki video, even though I wasn't saying that I'm using Loki in the video and I was just saying that Loki sucks. I got many angry comments about that, so I don't know if I put candy on the thumbnail if people are gonna get mad. But I mean, I'm gonna put him in thumbnail. I mean, this is the first time that I'm trying candy and I'm trying to use him in battles, but I don't, I don't want to lose battles just to be candy. Like, maybe here, maybe if we ban the Harima, maybe Candy could be good. I don't know. Maybe? Should I try it? He only has one Polymorph, though, and it's iffy, so it's kind of tempting to go with Galleos. But Candy does get extra turns, so maybe he could be decent against... Marriage capacity. Let's give it a go. Yeah. This is kind of perfect battle to try it because I'm not sure if it's good here or not, but we'll find out. Hmm, do I ban the Harima or Or Ramanto? Yeah, I think we're still gonna go for the Harima ban. We do have some polymorph, like half of the team, though I don't know if my Necrot has enough accuracy against the Ramantu, maybe not. Would be better if I <laughs> if I get the 6 star blessing on my Narciss as soon as possible. If he was in 4 piece stone skin and 6 star blessing, it would be like so much better. I would get so many wins that I would lose otherwise. Okay, that didn't hit very hard. I feel like usually that skill does like 100,000 or like 120k per attack, so I'm sure he didn't proc Helm Smasher, but even without the proc that, that seemed to hit very little. He probably doesn't. Doesn't have very good gear. I don't know if he even has lethal on, on, on the Ramanto. Maybe he doesn't even have lethal or savage. M maybe he does, I'm not sure, but I usually fight the really good one, so maybe that uh maybe that impairs my judgment a little bit, but I feel like usually it's around 100 k to 120k per hit on that skill. And he was hitting like 30k. Okay. That that was super easy battle. I think there probably was like, you know, a very big gear gap between me and that guy. It, it's not usually enough to save me, but I guess in that battle. I feel like we fought against this guy before today and lost, maybe.
Okay, I... Hmm... I feel like Krotos and... Galleus both might be kind of okay here. We, we want to get Polymorph and... We want to have a way to... Do something to the... Alas boss, but both of them can kind of do it. Which one do I want to pick? Well, okay, let's go with Galleus. Now that I think about it, he doesn't have Polymorph on anybody. Let's just go with Galleus. And I think Necret or UDK is the last one. I feel like if we go with Necret, then maybe we ban the Wukong. I don't know, he's probably going to pick a lockout though, but let's go with Necret actually. Necret would be the best if we can ban the Wukong. But I feel like probably he's gonna pick a lockout. Surely. Okay, Ragas. He, he has kind of fallen off. He used to be a good combination with Taras. And those used to be very popular. But now they haven't, so... I don't see him very often. Damn, okay. <laughs> we just got owned again before we got a single turn. That that sucks, but Mario's kind of does that a lot. We we even have decreased defense on us and it's two turns. So we can't nuke them. Yeah, we didn't get any feeble, but there's no way we can nuke them with decreased defense on us. Damn, that wasn't even close. <laughs> and it's not like my nukers are, you know, slow. My Everybody is like somewhere between like 250 to 280 out of my nukers, so but that guy was even faster. Little bit surprising because he didn't have Sifi or anything like that. But when you have Marius and get, you can get rid of Stone Skin and all of the boss, you don't need as much damage. So you can go full speed and Sacrifice a lot of damage. Wait, what? I picked Lydia. <laughs> I was to I was supposed to pick Armand. I guess I misclicked there. Fuck. I totally didn't even realize that one. Hmm. Okay. I often misclick, but I usually know this before I do it, but I just locked in that one and didn't even think about it. <laughs> I guess we'll have to just go with what we have. Damn, and I, I was gonna go, you know, full bolster with Necret and Duchess, but he has the Marius again and he's gonna get rid of everything, so. We would kind of need like Lockout or G Galatir or our, our own Grixia or something like that.
Well, it's it's not the worst if I just if I don't get the stone skin buff at the start. I think we can kill Harima instantly, maybe, but not maybe instantly though. Yeah, in like two turns. And unless I can, did I get locked out on mode or not? Okay, we did. If we didn't, I could have maybe remo removed the immunity, but I did get locked out. Ah, well, we got the polymorph, but we're also en enviable, so we can't do anything. And now it's gonna die before <laughs> before it's get it gets the next turn, I think. Maybe not. He does have shield. Maybe he can survive one Harima nuke, barely. Okay, he could, but now he's... Wait, Mord is gonna go first. It's not over yet. No, he still has the immu yeah, immunity, and yeah, we got slapped. Okay, we lost it, no, no chance for... Our Never getting a turn in this battle again, like, every time. I don't know, today's session feels like... ...worse than the sessions that I've had in the recent times. It feels especially bad and... ...we're always dying before we get a single... ...single turn on our nukers. I don't know if it's because Marius is a lot more common and... Most people have him. Probably it's because of that. I guess he's gonna be super contested pick when I get him. That everybody's going for both Marius and Armans in every single battle. But I'm slow. I I still don't have him. It's gonna take a while. Hopefully, I get one piece of stone skin this week during the Hydra reset on skinwalkers because I still can't do a proper four piece stone skin on Marius I mean it's the same set that I have on my roster but he does have the attack ring so I hope we could get defense ring or banner and I'm probably gonna want to have both of them in stone skin so when I get Marius, I might not use the rooster as much, unless I get stone skin for a piece for both of them. Which could of course easily happen in one week, you just need like one amulet and one other piece, and it could easily happen, but it's super RNG. I don't know if it's the client bucking out, but we got like two, three wins in a row, and we're kind of artificially getting boosted from battles that we didn't deserve to win. But yeah, I haven't been using my dots a lot lately. I probably should look into stealing some of her best gear to other champions. But the thing is that she doesn't need accuracy. And who do I want to gear in her build? I guess I could do it on Ankara, but especially since I'm usually using Ankara with Narsus. So yeah, maybe I could do that. I probably could go with that. That would be no more Frostbite Ankara, but we still have UDK. 
Yeah, maybe I'll try that on next session. Hmm. Maybe we maybe we will do something different here. Maybe I'll go with both Clayket and Gallows as the last two picks and he opened with Harim and UDK, so it doesn't look like it's gonna be a heavy speed team. Maybe that will work in this one. I don't usually go with the Clayket, even though I have him now, because my Clayket is super slow. But also Rotos might weak it, and maybe he can take one hit from Harim, so it might actually work in this battle. And now we kind of have like semi double speed threat with Claycat and Armans, but my Claycat is super slow, so not really, but he might perceive it that way. Oh, he even went with Dutch's meaning that we could for sure go first if we go for the Sifi ban, and we totally can do it in this battle. Nice. We don't really have any heals, but we're kind of being a little bit tanky now with both defense buff and strengthen. Of course, Rotos can ignore the defense, but we should still be very tanky. And <laughs> with the turn meter boost, we're actually just fully going first on, on this one. And also, I didn't think this guy had a lot of polymorph. Okay, Harima is in 6 star polymorph, but that's the only champion in his team. Damn, we we didn't get the weak hit on Gallows. Uh, should I do the A2 or not? He's gonna do a revive after this, but I think we should do it. We should do it anyway. Just to kill the Rodos. Remove some 10 meter from him. And there's even a possibility that we might um wait. Yeah, Narsus is gonna go first anyway, and we could do A2 A1 and possibly get the A2 back. But we can also just revive Gallows. And Gallows is gonna go before his Nukers. So it's all good. Oh we, <laughs> we got polymorphed, okay. Fair enough. Come on, weak it. Ah, my Rodos always gets weak it on every <laughs> every nook, but this guy is two out of two. Wait, Clayket is Force Affinity, right? Yeah. Both Clayket and Gallows are Force. I always hate hitting Harimas on my Rotos because he's gonna weak it, but this guy is just instantly going in for the Force Affinity champions every time and he's not even worried about it and he's also not getting any weak hits. Yeah, the Dutch A1 is messing up with him big time. We could revive Clayket here, and he could also revive Carlos. Should I do that? Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll go for that. We're not gonna get the extra turn now, though, when we do the revive. Maybe I should have just revived the Carlos with Ankara instead. Gallows could have taken a turn, and if he didn't get polymorphed, we would have instantly nuked them. Yeah, 
we, we talk of the defense and strength and buffs though. My Narciss is insanely tanky in this battle. Usually he's not tanky like this. Yeah. <laughs> that Hariman Nuke barely even touched us. I think now we're also... Yeah, we should be able to get some kills. Even through the Harima passive because of the shields on Duchess and UDK. Okay, no. <laughs> Almost, but not quite enough. Fuck. Damn. He couldn't weak it there, but this Rodos doesn't doesn't do any weak hits at all. Okay. That that was kind of closer than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it would be super easy, but I guess Harima Passive is so powerful that it was still kind of hard. Okay, last one. We gained a lot of points in the end, but we didn't really have any deserve them, so I don't feel that good about it. But let's get last one as a win and I guess we've gained a lot today, so... Well, I don't know if it's even a lot, but... We've gained a good chunk. I think we were like... 5-10 or something like that at the start, so it's not like we're gaining like 50 points or... Anything close to it. Maybe the way to go now is forget about Necrit and just go with double double reviver in in most battles and go with Glaiket sometimes. Like we could go with Glaiket here here again actually to get the. I mean he can buff the boss, but hmm, it it might still be kind of good. Should I go with Klaegat or Necrot? No, let's go with Klaegat. I just need to get way better gear on, on my Klaegat. He, he's so slow that he's not super threatening. He has like couple really good pieces and then some really bad ones and he's not fully beamed out with the chaos just yet or heavily clipped either uh, should we ban Galatir or one of the Nougars? we could almost go for Rotos ban here Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go for Rotospan. We we have the mod, so let's trust in her. Here's my clay get gear. We we have like two two triple speeds, and I guess the boots are fine, but the chest is horrible. The gloves are okay, but they don't have. As Kenshin yet, and shield is kind of crappy because you you would honestly think that I would have a triple or quad shield at this moment, and and the banner was horrible. If if you didn't see it, I need to get a better banner. Uh, I don't know if I should use the A2 yet or not. We might remove some stone skin though. Let's gamble. Let's gamble. Okay, win. Everybody resisted. I think my mod is like 450 accuracy, so it's not like she's super low either. She has a good amount, maybe even almost 500 accuracy.
but he also doesn't get the defense buff in this team, so Harima is not really hitting as hard as he could or she could. Damn. No, nobody, even Harima didn't take the decrease defense. Glegat could do that accuracy buff on our um, Galleos too, but he's locked out. Nice, nice. He doesn't really have turn meter manipulation in this team, and those are not gonna revive the Harima at. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. At full turn meter. So, as long as we can kill her once, I think uh, we can probably keep snowballing, and unless the Galatir messes us, messes us up with the lockout and stuns, and even with that, we can. Kind of maybe somehow maybe keep Harima dead. If I can get the defense down on the Harima, even with the A1, we would be able to hit her because the passive does like extra hit on everybody with defense down, but not if we <laughs> if we can do it first though. Dude, we have a lot of debuffs on us and. The more passive is removing the wrong ones. <laughs> it's keeping the lockout and removing the attack down from Garlos. I think we lost. Fuck. I think we lost it. The new girls just. <laughs> Just can't catch a break. We we could have gotten so many polymorph on, on this battle though, I can't kinda of feel like we got screwed. We we really needed a polymorph on the Galatir and then we could have won. Okay. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> it was supposed to be a candy, you know, video. I guess we had some candy battles, but well, okay, three battles in a row. Maybe I did many candy battles, but it feels like I couldn't use him as much as I wanted to. But, you know, obviously I wasn't expecting candy to be earth chattering. And I kind of said it at the start of the video too, that he was really good a while ago, and I wish I had it back then. Getting him right now is not, not that big deal anymore, and nobody really uses him, but I will definitely give him geared and use him sometimes. Probably I'm gonna use Carlos more than Candy, or definitely, but I will certainly keep Candy geared and use him. Also, when we get the stone skin, for a piece it's gonna be way better, but that's what I say about every champion. Anyway, have a nice day, good luck with your whatever you're doing and I guess the shard pulls that we're getting today. Good luck with the shard pulls, I hope you get the Odin, I hope I get Odin too, <laughs> with, my, with my 12 words, but I'm gonna give it a go, but anyway, that's it, see ya.